on. We're at another Oshkosh. Uh, what's this make? Ten or eleven now that we're in there? Uh, something like that. It's kind of hard to keep track of uh, how many. It's been several. Now you can handle a number of uh, aircraft. Uh, give me a little idea what it is that you're doing. Uh, right now we handle uh, obviously the, the swing light sport. Uh, but uh, we're also uh, pretty heavily involved in uh, ultralight and experimental. Uh, I produce both the ultralight version of the hyperlight, single place, and the two-seat uh, experimental version. And uh, lately, we've got a lot of interest uh, in the ultralight. Uh, seems they are starting to make a comeback. Yeah, the little hyperlight, that's a little biplane. Uh, uh, it, it was originally designed by uh, Sorrell Aviation, was it not? Uh, Tim Sorrell and his brothers uh, built it in the early 80s and uh, had pretty good su su success with it. Yeah. And, and that airplane didn't have to take a lot off it to make ultralight. It was an ultralight. It was an ultralight uh, from the ground up, yeah. Powered by a 28-horsepower engine. And, uh, yeah, I flew a little 28-horsepower Rotax. I mean, the thing was clock on 70, 80 miles an hour. Yeah. Yeah, it took a little while to get off the ground, but once you broke their motor, and it, uh, it really did. It scoots right along, yeah. How is that kit coming out now? Like, are you uh, offering it as an Altroid ready to fly, or are you offering it as a kit? We're uh, offering it both ways, and uh, the majority of them are leaving as ready to fly airplanes. Uh, people would rather just uh, jump in and fly than uh, spend 100, uh, 150 hours building them. Well, what type of a kit is it when it comes to the personal? Like, is it something where, you know, you've got a lot of work uh, welding, a lot of fabrication? No, all the uh, machining and welding is done. Uh, the uh, fabric comes as pre-sewn envelopes. There's 10 of them. So basically all the customer has to do is uh, a lot of bolting together. I uh, bolt on the engine propeller, the controls, the interior, uh, bolt the seat in, your landing gear gets bolted on, then just uh, cover it uh, for the most part like putting on a, a pair of socks. Because it's using like a background sailcloth. So yeah, actually ripstop uh, nylon, uh, real similar to parachute material. Now, we can step up the, from that, though, and we can go to, say, an amateur-built experimental aircraft, put a little more power on it. What type of kit is that? That's uh, the two-place, and the uh, standard engine is uh, the 503 Rotax, 50 horse, and it uh, was designed around that engine. flies just fine, but uh, we can go uh, with the 582, the 912, the Jabiru, the HKS, got a variety of engines. And uh, the big difference is it's a one-piece fuselage, a little stronger. Uh, and uh, traditional covering, stits or polyfiber. Um, and, and that's just side-by-side uh, seating? Both side-by-side. Side. And what type of control systems are you using? Um, control systems, your, your uh, basic push-pull tube for the elevators. Uh, rudder uh, is uh, cable-operated. And is it uh, like uh, dual controls, dual rudder? Dual controls, yeah. Dual it's, six, dual it's, it's, yeah, it's a good training machine. Uh, full dual controls, stick, rudder, brakes. And how many hours would the average person take to build uh, that airplane? Uh, the two place is uh, going to take a little longer, somewhere between three and 350 hours. Now, these aircraft have been out for uh, a number of years now. How many of them are, you say, flying in the uh, To my knowledge, about uh, 500 of the single place machines and somewhere around 20 of the two place machines. Oh, it's got a well proven history then. Yeah, long history, great uh, safety record. Uh, they're probably one of the safest ones on the market. Yeah, because I've, I've seen them in Florida, and I've seen them in Canada, and I was actually in France when I saw one out in... There's a few in France, so we got a couple in Australia, a couple in Japan that I know of, uh, one in Spain right now. Oh, have you guys got anything uh, coming up in the near future that we should be thinking or talking about? Yeah, actually, uh, 2012 is going to be the 30th anniversary of the Hyperlight, so we're in the real early stages of putting together a, a group fly-in. Uh, we're working on a 30th anniversary edition of the Hyperlight, and... Uh, um, not so much uh, structural or engineering changes, but uh, cosmetic changes, uh, be a uh, whole new look to it, but uh, uh, be something special for the 30th anniversary. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, what's the easiest way to do it? Easiest way is my website, that's uh, hyperlightaircraft.com, all one word, or uh, my cell phone number is 586 212-5875, and the phone's always with me. Uh, Where are you physically located? Right now, I'm just going to Detroit. Uh, that's going to change between now and the end of the year. We're still looking real serious about the west part of Wisconsin. Uh, nothing definite yet, but uh, about 90% chance of relocating before uh, the end of this year. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.